Hi everyone, my name is Gracie and I'm the STEAM Senior Library Assistant at Durham County Library. Thank you for joining me today in the first program of our bubble series called All About the Bubbly. Today we're going to be making some mock champagne and talking a little bit about the history, geography, and science behind champagne. Let's get started. Of course, we can't have a program about champagne without having some kind of champagne. So today we're going to be making some mock champagne. All you need is some ginger ale and some sort of juice. Today I'm going to be using apple juice. It's really easy. All you have to do is mix equal parts of ginger ale and whatever juice that you would like. Let's mix it up. Cheers. So, what exactly is champagne? Well, generally speaking, most wines get their name from the region in which the grapes it is made from are grown. Champagne is no different. It's made with grapes from the Champagne region of France. And this is shown in red on the picture below. However, that's not all that makes champagne what it is. There are specific grape growing, pressing, fermenting, and carbonating techniques that make champagne truly unique. Let's talk a little bit about the process of making champagne. One of the main things that makes champagne different is the carbonation or the bubbles. Most wines actually have a fermentation process and then a bottling process, but champagne actually has a second fermentation process after it's bottled. What happens is there are extra yeast particles and rock sugar in the bottles, and the yeast feeds on the rock sugar and produces what's called lees. The bottle is stored sideways, and then after it's aged about one and a half years, it is turned upside down and opened so that the lees can be removed. A lot of companies will also add some sugar into the champagne after this so that it has a sweeter taste. And then the final part of the process is corking the bottle. Now that we've gone over what makes champagne champagne, let's talk a little bit about the history. There has actually been some debate as to who discovered champagne first between the French and the British. I'm going to apologize in advance for any names that I mispronounce. The French claim that a monk named Dom Perignon was the one who discovered champagne and actually coined the phrase, come quickly, I'm tasting the stars. While Dom Perignon did contribute a lot to the production and development of champagne and other sparkling wine, he did not discover it. The discoverer was actually a British scientist named Christopher Merritt, and he was the first to discover and write an academic paper on the properties of champagne. Even though champagne is technically a French wine because of where the grapes are grown, it was discovered by the British. Another interesting fact is that one of the most influential producers and developers of champagne is a woman named Widow Clicquot. Madame Clicquot was a young widow left with her late husband's fortune and company. She made great strides to make the champagne business what it is today. If you are interested, there is actually a great biography titled The Widow Clicquot by Tilar Mazeo, which you can check out at one of our local libraries, or you can listen to the audiobook on Hoopla. You can check out some of the resources that I've used for this presentation through the links that I have here. Thank you guys so much for watching and participating in our first bubble series program titled All About the Bubbly. I hope you all enjoyed it and look out for our future bubble program series to be posted about on our social media.